So, who are you and which group are you in? Uh, I'm Steve Lombardi. I'm the uh, technical evangelist for the MapPoint business unit. And uh, primarily, we're going to be talking about the, our newest product, the, uh, the location server, the MapPoint location server today. Okay, so what is location server? What does that give me? Uh, what location server does is uh, it... <laughs> Sorry, someone was at the door. Um, what location server does is it lets a developer build an application that gets the real-time location of a mobile phone, whether it's a Windows mobile device or another supported device on a supported wireless operator network. Uh, lets you get the real-time coordinate of where that device is, and of course that lets you do things like, you know, the obvious things that people think of right away in mobile location-based services are very consumer-oriented things like, well, now that I know my location, help me find a hotel or a coffee shop nearby, and that's all fine and good. But what we're really focused on is enterprise uh, applications of that technology. So the ability to uh, track where your mobile sales force is or uh, a field force of repair people. Or a good example, one of our early adopter customers is a global news agency that's using the product to um, track where their news vans and their reporters are. So if they get a call into their dispatch center saying there's a security breach at uh, the San Francisco airport, they can type in SFO, zoom in on that area, and see what mobile assets like trucks and reporters and makeup artists and producers they've got nearby and route them to the scene. Okay, so you mentioned smartphone. Does that mean that I need to have a, a Windows mobile smartphone or Pocket PC as the, as the device in order to be tracked using the uh, location-based server? We want you carrying a Windows mobile smartphone. Of course uh, we do. Or Pocket PC phone. But no, uh, what it really comes down to is having a device supported by the particular wireless operator network. Um, the location server has a plug-in architecture. We build these plugins for the server that know how to talk to the different wireless operator backends to get real-time location. And then at that point, they're completely a black box to us. They, uh, they go off and spin their wheels and get the real-time location of a device. Um, so the dependencies for the device are really tied to that particular network. Some wireless operators uh, on the really accurate end of the spectrum have deployed assisted GPS down in their handsets. That can give you like a 10 meter accurate fix of where mobile devices on the network. Stepping back from that, there's different techniques for um, uh, triangulation based on time difference from multiple towers down to the handset. Uh, and that can be pretty accurate, not as accurate as GPS, but fairly accurate, uh, often under 100 meters, uh, but very expensive for the wireless operators to deploy. Um, and since it's more expensive and less accurate, you're seeing more and more operators moving towards assisted GPS and handsets. And on the least accurate end of the spectrum, they could be doing a simple cell tower lookup, which in a dense metro area like Seattle or Manhattan can be accurate to a couple of city blocks. But once you get out into more rural areas where the towers are uh, less dense, suddenly you could be you know, at five kilometers between towers. So that's not really accurate. And, uh, not usable for a lot of scenarios. But I guess for your the scenario that you've already given, which is like a, a global news operator, um, mm -hmm. uh, that might be good enough. Yeah, very often um, in the case of that news uh, company, uh, the news vans that they're tracking, they've only, they're not very dense. They've only got 50 or 60 of them spread across the country. So they don't need to see to 10 meters where one of those vans is located. They're happy seeing it uh, to within a kilometer is actually great. So we're actually giving them more accuracy today than they really need for their application. Okay, so I can be carrying any supported mobile device, whether this be a smartphone, Pog PC, or Nokia, or Ericsson, or whatever else, just as long as it's on a supported network. Right, as a matter of fact, um, at, uh, at PC in October, we did a little demo where uh, we want to send a couple of cab drivers out while I was doing a presentation and then track where the cabs are. And um, we thought that if we gave them really nice pocket PC phones or smartphones that they might not come back. Uh, so we took the, uh, the SIMs out of the, our, our phones and we put it in disposable Nokia phones, we'll call them. And uh, they were just as locatable on this particular wireless operator's network. But the good thing is, I guess, using location-based server, you could at least track the cab drivers down and get your devices back if you needed to. Accurate to at least their cell tower. <laughs> okay, so do you have any, any kind of demos or anything that you want to always, show us around this? Always have demos. Okay, good. Um, so I thought I'd start by showing you uh, the this guy. The uh, we, we call it the MapPoint mobile locator client. And this is a client application that we include with the server. 
And we include it so that uh, an organization has a nice out-of-box experience. So after you've installed your server, you've configured your phones on it using the administrative tool we provide, you've installed your plugins, you could start building an application, but developers want some immediate gratification. So we include a Windows XP client, and we include uh, a pocket PC-based client that runs on the Compaq framework uh, so that you can be running right out of the box. So let me show you a couple things in here. Uh, let's start by talking about privacy because that's a an often asked question is, you know, is this a tool for stalkers? And the answer is very clearly no. We have, we've worked on privacy and security in this product from the ground up from day one. We really put a lot of uh, our dev resources um, into the area of privacy and security. So what you can see here is my mobile contact manager. Um, to get on my buddy list, I can go in and add someone. And I'm not adding just anybody. The universe of people that I can add isn't anyone out there on the internet. It's just the people that are provisioned on my instance of the location server. Oh, so, OK, so as part of your corporate network, people that are uh, uh, Right, so for that, for that news agency, they would only the only people that would come up in this dialogue are people that are provisioned on their server. Right. Uh, so we're using Active Directory for the authentication, so it's, uh, it's really behind the scenes using that organization's Active Directory. So if I was to put in a partial name here, like Michael, we hit next. We make a call, a uh, SOAP call, out to location server and pull in all the Michaels or Michelles, in this case, um, that are provisioned on my server. I could choose Michael Graf and hit next. You know, I'm about to add Michael to my mobile contact list. But you can see that I've got a few options for allowing Michael to see my real-time location or not. And also, this one's kind of neat. This notification checkbox says that even though I'm giving Michael permission to look up my location, every time he does, I want to get an SMS notification on my device just so I know that uh, someone is uh, uh, checking on my location. So I'll hit Finish. Michael is already on my contact list, so I get this message. But otherwise, uh, he would be added. And Michael would get an SMS message saying that Steve Lombardi is uh, asking for your permission. And he'd have to go in and reciprocate and give me that permission, much like adding an MSN messenger buddy. Now, once he's on my buddy list, um, I can look him up. I can come over here and do a search. And you can see all of my contacts here. I can click on any of these guys and um, do a find. You can see that a moment ago, I just found my location. So here's my current location. Hit the Find button. And you can see that it put me right here uh, off of Microsoft Campus. Pretty neat. So it is, uh, and of course, you know, the maps are interactive. The maps are coming from the MapPoint web service. And you know, the access to the MapPoint web service is included with a license of the location server. So developers don't have to worry about you know, going and building their own mapping tools or integrating with other uh, third-party mapping tools. That's just included right in the box there. Um, so it might be a good time to show you a, a, an architecture slide to kind of explain okay, so, how it works. So just a quick question about yeah. privacy. So let's say that I've, I've finished my day at work, mm -hmm. and I'm a, a cab driver, or I work for this news crew, or whatever else, and I really don't want my corporation to be tracking me during my own personal time. How do I, as a user, kind of switch that, that off? So A couple ways. Uh, you can either use one of the applications that we supply, like an application like this, but that wouldn't really be convenient to you know, go to a Windows XP desktop, run this application, and say, I don't want to be located. Uh, so you could do it from your mobile device. Um, that organization could give you an application running on your mobile that lets you turn it off. Um, or, again, keeping in mind that all of this is built on our open API, that organization could automatically turn location off at the end of the day. So when your shift ends, um, they electronically check you out and turn location off server side. Okay, so that's the, pretty cool. The API would certainly allow that. That's right. something that an organization would uh, build or enforce. Okay, so you mentioned the API, and mm -hmm. you're just about to show us architecture. I guess you, you'll talk about the API as part of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's sure. see. That. So this is a real high-level diagram that you're uh, looking at here. Let me just turn it on and let it, let it build for you. So the, the historic problem is that an organization, we'll, we'll use the news organization as an example. They've, this is their enterprise network. Um, they might have some mobile applications that want to talk to a wireless network back here. They might have internal line of business applications, like a dispatch application uh, or Salesforce automation application or what have you, that also want to talk to uh, this orange box back here, the mobile network. But the challenge is that chances are good that all of their phones, all their corporate phones, aren't on just one network. So they're going to have multiple networks back here. And they're going to have to write their application 
uh, against different APIs. Each of those mobile operators deals with security differently. They each have a different location API. Um, there's so many differences back there that it's going to take them six months just to build their application to talk to one mobile network uh, and then multiply that out by five networks in many countries. And you've got a lot of uh, people hours of work to get that coded up. So with Location Server, we, we have this plug-in architecture that I mentioned earlier. Microsoft partners with each of the uh, mobile operators to build a plugin that knows how to talk to their network. So the ones that we've announced so far that are available right now are uh, Bell Mobility in Canada and Sprint in the United States. And over in Europe, where we just launched the product about a month ago, we've got O2 in uh, the UK and Telesonar in Sweden. And we'll be introducing, the nice thing about the architecture is that you know, now that the server is out, we'll just keep introducing these plugins as we partner with more and more wireless operators. And you'll be able to just download them from our server and uh, install them on your server, provision your phones on that network, and without changing your application, you're off and running. So the uh, the plugin architecture, is this something that uh, 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 one of our customers could write their own custom plugin in, into this? Not yet, but we do anticipate that in the future we'll just open up that plugin API. So right now the plugins are just being built by Microsoft in close partnership with the mobile operators, but uh, it's very possible that in the future we would open up that API so that anyone could build a plugin for a source of real-time location that we haven't even thought about yet. Think of things like RFID and uh, outdoor Wi-Fi positioning. Uh, architecturally, there's no reason that those could be plugged right into the location server. Right. Um, so the, the nice thing for developers is that then all the complexity of talking to that orange box gets distilled down to a simple SOAP API, three lines of Visual Basic or C Sharp or, dare I say, uh, Java for Java developers. And you can be uh, getting the real-time location of uh, mobile devices on your network, and a couple more lines of code, and you're rendering maps um, for a dispatch type of application. So less than 10 lines of code, I've found somebody, and I've got a, uh, a bitmap map that I can, I can display up on the screen. Yeah, at, it, at its core. The rest of it after that is just Chrome and you know window dressing, but that's 10, 10 lines of VB or C Sharp, and you're in business. That is pretty neat. Um, so can we see it running? Yeah, so we saw, we saw one application running back there, the, the mobile locator. Let's look at uh, a couple others that are kind of fun. Uh, this is a, a dispatch application. So here, you're seeing a, a VB WinForm application running on the uh, .NET framework. And those, those green checkboxes represent taxi drivers. Um, now, of course, they're, what they are, really are are Microsoft employees that are on our dog food server. Uh, so they're spread out across the country, not really a a realistic uh, taxi scenario, but squint a little bit and you'll see that for a taxi company this could be quite quite useful. So let's say um, uh, a call comes into their dispatch center and they need a pickup at uh, 232 Belmont Ave in Seattle. The operator would type that in and geocode that location. That's a, of course a fixed location, so we're just going to look that up um, and plot it on a map and then they'll be able to see what drivers are nearby that, uh, that are available for that pickup. So here's the location. Let's zoom out. Uh, that's pretty far. You can see, of course, since uh, I'm on the other side of the lake, and most of the people on the dog food server, Microsoft employees, they're all over on the other side of the water right now. So we're going to ask the system to select the optimal driver for this pickup, and it's going to calculate the real-time uh, drive time for each of the drivers that are in view. And you can see that there were seven drivers around. And Jason Black is the closest. He's about 14 minutes away. Now, this is pretty cool. You can see that Jason is going to make his way down here, uh, of course, along with his phone, we presume. And if I zoom in, you'll see that we created what we call a, a geofence around that pickup location. When the phone enters that geofence, we can actually do a hit detection there and trigger some event programmatically. Um, in the case of a taxi company, when I get to a quarter mile, and of course the size of that buffer is arbitrary. Um, in this case, it's about a quarter mile. When the taxi driver is a quarter mile away, I might want to uh, send an SMS or uh, an automatic phone call saying, hey, Mr. Lombardi, your cab has arrived, because I'm up on the 20th floor and I can't see the street. So it would be great to get an automatic notification. Uh, the way that news organization uses this is they create a much larger buffer of, say, uh, 30 miles, because they know that uh, one of those trucks might be coming in for from a pretty long haul to make it to a news event. They don't want all of their employees to converge at the scene of the fire until the truck is nearby. So when the truck enters that zone of 30-minute 30, 30 zone, 
Uh, that's when they'll send an SMS to the producer and the reporter saying, okay, now it's time to get over to Main Street to cover the big blaze that's going on. Right. And uh, one more application that's kind so of... So just, um, just while we're on that note, yeah. so um, so you've, you've calculated a route for, for the driver to get from his current location, in this case, the taxi firm, to go and pick up a customer. Mm -hmm. um, can can the guy that's got that cell phone be given that, that kind of routing information on his phone? Yeah, and that's where... Uh, that's where you get into the benefits of having a, a Windows mobile device versus just a, a dumb phone. Um, the dumb phone can be located, but I, I can't execute code down on it. How about having a compact framework application running on smartphone uh, that lets the, the operator or the field technician um, download the maps and the driving directions right to his handset. Mm -hmm. So now they've got a multifunction device. Uh, one of, one of our customers that's looking to use the service is uh, an elevator repair company. They've got a lot of people out in the field that are using pocket PC phones today to get real-time data about an elevator that they're about to repair. So they'll take out their pocket PC phone, and they can type in the serial number of an elevator and you know pull up its work history so that they can see that a certain rotor or motor was replaced last month or what have you. Uh, so now when those become locatable, they'll be able to, um, from their dispatch center, see where someone is. So when a, uh, an emergency call comes in for an elevator repair, very similar to what we just saw in the taxi application. They'll be able to pull up a map of that area, see who's nearby, and dispatch them. And then, since they've got uh, a Windows mobile device, send the driving directions right down to the device. Well, that's pretty cool. So you had a second application that you were just about to show us. Yeah, this is just a fun one. Um, we, what we've done is we've looked up another, you can see that uh, not a not a real nice user interface here because I, I'm not a real good user interface designer. But uh, I've got a drop down list of all my uh, locatable contacts, and I just looked one of them up. I chose Frank Morris here. I uh, got Frank's location. Uh, we made a web service call to the MapPoint web service to get a map. Nothing too startling there. But now in my drop down list for the map style, I'm going to choose uh, Globe Explorer. Globe Explorer is a uh, partner of ours. They've got a web service that instead of uh, serving out vector maps, like the map point maps, they serve uh, raster maps, aerial images. And voila, we can now see where, uh, where Frank is located uh, from an aerial image. And we can zoom in pretty tight on this. Let's get down to uh, a quarter mile. That was nice and snappy in there. Uh, there you can see a rooftop view of where that particular uh, user is located. And that's pretty uh, pretty neat for uh, dispatch applications and um, uh, commercial real estate applications often call for aerial imagery like this. So it's just uh, the, one of the nice things about web services is it makes it easy as a developer to uh, pull in you know, different content from over the net that I don't have to be hosting myself. Great. Um, and. Uh I, I believe there's another interesting website that we need to go and take a look at, which is ah uh, yeah, where's where's Steve? Yeah, and this is one that uh, people that are watching this uh, can feel free to try out right now. This is a little um, web application that I put together. This is actually the first MLS application that I built um, as soon as I was provisioned on the server and had access to the API and wanted to try it out. I thought, wow, oh, wouldn't it be great to just have a web app that I could uh, give the URL to friends, family, and they could just track where I am all the time. Um, and it has spiraled out of control. <laughs> so now it's, it's uh, I'm tracked by a lot of people now. Uh, and there's the, you can see the URL in the address bar. Feel free to uh, so try it out. Does that include your manager? Does your manager track you as well? Always keeping tabs on you. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a special manager flag that detects uh, Tom's IP address and uh, always shows me here in 119. Fantastic. I need to get that as well. Um, so would it be possible to kind of reverse that so you know when your manager is getting close to the office so you can look busy? Yeah, actually you could. Maybe that's a feature that I'll have to add for uh, B2. Great. Okay, so is there anything else you want to tell us or show us about MapPoint, uh, the location server? Oh, I, I could go on all day. I don't know what the tolerance is of the average viewer to uh, watch me spew about mapping applications. So you're just about done for now? Done for now. Okay, good. Well, thanks very much for your time.